Well, here we are, it's end of September, and it's quite a chilly day today. And we've come down to the Mendip Hills in Somerset, just south of Bristol. And we're gonna walk up onto the highest point. We've parked in a place called Burrington Coombe, which it looks a bit like a, a smaller version of Cheddar. Look, see? And uh, same, same as Cheddar, the road goes down through the middle. Um, and a lot of cyclists do come down this way as well. It's, just, yeah. it's great for cycling. So it was quite chilly actually. So there's a few things to see on the way up to the top and we'll show you now. Let's go. We're just across the road from where we parked the car is Rock of Ages. Which... Oh, it's motorbikes. This rock derives its name from the well-known hymn written around 1762 by the Reverend A.M. Top Lady, who was inspired while sheltering in his cleft during a storm. If I was in a storm, I would have just got back in the car. <laughs> Look, who's just parked over there? Come on, man. <laughs> We've walked a bit further up now. Well, it's just around from where we parked the car. And there's a, this is a cave. It's called Avaline's Hole. I'm not sure. If I'm wrong, it'll be up on the screen. Let's have a look. There it is. Quite dark inside. Wonder if there's anybody living in it now. The only thing with the first part of this walk is that you are next to the road and it's quite busy. This goes quiet all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in a minute, we will be um, turning off and heading up quite steeply there. Okay, so we've left the road now at last. It wasn't that far actually, it's literally about a five minute walk from where you parked the car. Yeah. Now we're walking up the track and then slowly starting to rise up onto the hill. But first, there's a couple of um, some more caves on the way actually. Well, we've got a bit of a stumbling block. There's a, a huge tree has fallen right across the path. So we, we can get through there actually. Oh, that was a bit of an obstacle. Um, that was a bit of an obstacle, wasn't it? You right? There's normally a stream that goes through the middle here, but this is the end of September and we haven't had no rain for a while. Look at that. Oh, that's Goat Church Cavern. I think there's another entrance. Up. Up there, yeah. yeah, this was a, actually a Victorian show cave. I can't see people squeezing their food way through that little hole down there. But it's time to find the other entrance room, isn't it? Yeah. That's the bigger entrance anyway. Yeah. Dark. Right, let's carry on. Now 
now as we walk along, we keep coming across as hundreds and hundreds of like these strings and tumps. I thought, what the earth are they? And we found out we're actually walking to a ghost town. Well, not exactly a ghost town. It's called a, it's um, a decoy town. And what it was during World War II, a bombing decoy town was constructed on Black Down, which is here. Very windy as well. And yes, it was too windy. In fact, it's much too windy even for the camera's microphone to cope with. So I'll tell you the rest of the story with this voiceover. To protect the strategically important city of Bristol and its busy port, a decoy town was constructed at Beacon Batch on Blackdown, on the western end of the Mendips. A fake towns created made to simulate burning British settlements and fool the Luftwaffe into bombing open countryside instead of towns and cities. In 1940, Blackdown, the highest point on the Mendip Hills, had already had approximately 1,800 tumps built in a grid formation that carefully calculated intervals to prevent enemy aircraft landing and taking off again. Enemy bombers approaching from the south would reach Blackdown before Bristol, and it was hoped that by making the site resemble a poorly blacked out Bristol at night, bombs would be dropped here instead. In those days, the navigation of aircraft by night was both difficult and hazardous. This was the reason for the blackout. If enemy air crews couldn't obtain visual information from the ground, then the further from home they flew, the more inaccurate their navigation was likely to be. Blackdown was one of 12 decoy sites around Bristol, and the decoy towns had to be convincing enough for the attacking planes to believe that they had found their target. Great care was taken to ensure that the Mendip town was to scale in order that the enemy air crew to be convinced that they were looking at a large city. Glow boxes were used to simulate the streets and railways of Bristol based on aerial photographs of the city's railway marshalling yards. The decoys were fitted with dim red lights simulating activities like the stoking of steam locomotives. It was laid out by Shepperton Film Studios. The light bulbs were powered by electrical generators contained in two bunkers. The bunkers were manned 24 hours every day and there was only basic living accommodation. Very few have survived. The bunker on Blackdown is one of the best preserved in the country. It's built of concrete and brick construction with a blast wall located outside the entrance. Burning bales of straw soaked in creosote were used to simulate the effects of insane bombs dropped by the first wave of Pathfinder night bombers. Drums of oil were also ignited to simulate the effect of a blazing city or town with the aim of fooling subsequent waves of bombers into dropping their bombs on the wrong location. There's been more of these tubs here now they're everywhere. And there's another line going that way as well, aren't there? It's literally just barren wasteland around, around us with just hundreds and hundreds of these tubs everywhere. Anyway, we're on the main plateau of black down now and just up ahead is the, the beacon batch the summit so we'll make our way up to that and oh it's a bit windy we'll make our way up to that now ah nearly here Pretty chilly, isn't it? It's cold, yeah. Considering it's still September, it's like the end of September, but it's still September. Shocking. Well, here we are then, highest point in the Mendip, 325 meters, I think it is. And uh, while it doesn't fall away dramatically steep on the sides like the Welsh mountains do, it's still a really good view looking all around. In all directions, where can we start? We've got the Severn Estuary over there. Like Brecon Beacons is somewhere over in that direction, but it's quite a misty day today, it's not the best of visibility. Um, you can see the islands in the Bristol Channel are steep and flat home. Portis Head and Cleve Dun. Um, what else can we say? Oh, it's Bristol Airport over there. Chew Valley Lake over there, which supplies Bristol with its drinking water. And in that direction over there is Brentnell Hill, and uh, I can't remember the name of the power station now. Is it, no? Hinkley Point, that's right, yeah. Hinkley Point, and behind that is Exmoor, of course, and the Quantock Hills. But yeah, pretty good for you all around. Let's try and get out of the wind a minute. Right. Oh, let's try and get in here. <laughs> I took shelter inside this cairn, which is just near the summit, because it's blimmin' freezing, that wind, isn't it? But it's a lovely clear day, not quite as clear as I would have liked them fortunately. On a really clear day you can see the Welsh mountains much more clearer. 
But we're just going to sit here and get warm for a bit. Should have bought a flask, didn't we? Yeah. Never mind. And then we're going to head on back. So that's that then. And we'll see you next time.